My name is Gavin Evans and this is my review of Better Call Saul Season 2 and this will be a spoiler filled review so if you haven't seen it go and watch it then come back and watch this review because I will be going in depth. Now last week I reviewed Season 1 and I wasn't big on it. I had very high expectations and it didn't impress me. There's definitely good elements there and it comes together in the end but up until that point I felt like it was very unfocused and a bit messy. But this season is everything I wanted the first season to be. This is a great season of television. I was expecting something similar to Breaking Bad but it kind of hit me this season that this is less like Breaking Bad and more like Bojack Horseman. Like you're just watching this one guy make the worst possible decisions that don't only affect him but affect those around him. And I also found that it's a great exploration of do the ends justify the means and just how immoral can you go to do the right thing. And those ideas just make for a compelling watch. I also found that this season had much more of a consistent storyline. It wasn't jumping all over the place, it was a lot more A to Z which I definitely preferred. And I love the way this season begins with just Jimmy chilling in the pool and Cam helping him realizes that he needs to get his shit together. And I do like that scene where they con that one guy at the bar as Giselle and Victor with a K and the kiss that she gives Jimmy at the end of that episode I thought was very satisfying and their relationship is such a highlight. You know there's this one scene where Jimmy's talking and he's doing a really good job but then he starts to see that they're collecting cell phones and he clues in that his brother's gonna be there and he starts getting a bit more nervous and he's losing his train of thought and Kim just places her hand on his leg and just helps him calm down, he gains his composure and he nails the rest of it. And I thought that was such a beautiful pure moment that really does highlight the strengths of these two together. And I love how we see Jimmy screw up time and time again. There's this one scene where Jimmy and Kim are talking over this pie and they're making jokes and laughing about Jimmy's day and then at a certain point Kim realized that Jimmy actually did something very bad and it goes from a nice joyful moment to a super serious you need to stop this moment just like that in the 180 you buy into it completely and I also thought everything regarding the commercial was fantastic. And the thing is the commercial he shoots is actually really good but Cliff is absolutely in the right to be furious at him for Jimmy not consulting with him beforehand. You understand why Jimmy did it but you're still like oh why did you do that and the way that it affects Kim makes it all the more effective and I love how when he sees a commercial later on they replaced his voiceover and that also stung him a little bit and because you keep watching Jimmy screw up time and time and time again and how it affects everyone around him you kind of start to understand that Chuck might be objectively correct in his assessment of Jimmy. Like the way I viewed him last season at the end and how I viewed him this season is a huge difference because now I'm thinking yeah like he's a bad brother but everything he says about Jimmy is factual. And that one scene where he's talking to Cam I thought was really well written and you can see just how similar they are. They both love Jimmy in short in different ways but they've both been screwed over by him a few different times. And the thing is you're just waiting for Jimmy to screw up again. So when he goes to Chuck's home after they took the Misa Vordi project from Kim and I piece together what he's about to do I was like yelling at the screen like no stop stop you stop you're going to make everything so much worse. And I love the fact that Chuck figures it out. Because when you stop and think about it, it is super obvious. The motivation, they took it from Kim, how it was done, Jimmy was there when Chuck was passed out. Like all the information is there. So the fact that Chuck put the pieces together, it didn't feel like a stretch. I totally bought into it. And he just knows his brother that good. And I love the fact that even when Kim realizes that everything Chuck says is correct, she doesn't team up against Jimmy and get mad at him in front of him. Instead she defends him and puts Chuck in his place even though 
Jimmy unwillingly got her involved in this terrible situation. And I love the fact that Jimmy's trying to cover up his tracks and the fact that Chuck is already on top of it. And when he's witnessing Chuck freak out at the guy at the one store and Chuck passes out, it's just like, what do you do in a situation like that? Like you either leave your brother on the ground and you get away with it or you blow it up and you help your brother out. And the thing about Jimmy is that his biggest curse is his heart. As much as he wants to hate Chuck and screw him over, he can't bring himself to do it. So he's putting everything on the line to help his brother out. And it does make him a better character to root for, but it was also the stupidest thing he could have done. He still gets away with it, but then Chuck decides that he can take advantage of his brother heart one last time and screw him over and it ends on this brilliant cliffhanger where Chuck recorded Jimmy confessing to what he did. And that is such a perfect cliffhanger and the way we got to that point is so masterfully written. So I loved all of that and we also got Mike's storyline which I do think is good. I just still think it's very disconnected from everything else. I know it's going to tie in eventually, but up until we get to that point, it kind of feels like filler and not much else. But I do love some of the moments with Mike this season, like early on when that one guy pulls up in that bright yellow jeep and he tells Mike to get in and Mike absolutely refuses to and that guy ends up screwing up. And just the fact that he has a bright yellow vehicle and then he has bright yellow shoes, bright yellow watch. And the guy's just not hiding what he's doing at all. Like, the guy's a complete idiot. And when he calls the cops because his baseball cards were stolen, uh, just, what a fool. But I also love how Mike outsmarts everyone with that one welcome mat where he can see the shoe prints. That was brilliant in the way he beats up those guys. I love that. And you just root for Mike. And when they start to threaten his granddaughter, you feel the stakes and the tension all the more. So that got me more invested in this story. And I absolutely love the fact that Mike gets Tuco out of trouble for 50 grand and he pays Nacho back 25 grand because he didn't follow up. It just shows how honorable of a guy he is. And I also love what he makes with the holes and sticking the nail suit. I thought that was really great. And then we've also got Kim's plot, which mainly ties into Jimmy. But I do love how she gets offered another job and how excited she is about it like when she gets her client and she's so overly enthusiastic you kind of understand why Jimmy did what he did it's still wrong but you get it and when she decides to work with Jimmy I had a bad feeling about it. now I do love the fact that we see them clean up the place and how it goes from dirty dentist office to a nice clean area i just love it when we see stuff in that like movies that's why i enjoy the money pit a lot more than most people and i love how she ends up quitting hhm and her and howard still have nothing but respect for each other but then they go immediately at war so i thought that was really great so the writing in the story was really fantastic because it was character driven and they gave the characters a lot more to do and the relationships and the complexity complexities on display are just fantastic. Bob Odenkirk is once again absolutely incredible here. He carries the show incredibly well. And the way that he's able to show his empathetic side and just how heartfelt Jimmy is as a character, I think he does that incredibly well. You also got Michael McKean who plays Chuck. And... It kind of dawned on me near the end of the season that he sounds a bit like Wallace Shawn. I'm not saying it's a spot on comparison, but I did have that thought go through my head. And I do love how we see that one scene of Jimmy meeting Chuck's wife and how he keeps making loyal jokes and she seems to laugh at them and enjoy Jimmy's presence. And then later Chuck tries to make the same jokes and she's not into it. And you can see that Chucky resents Jimmy a bit for being the more likable personality failed of the two. You know, one thing I say about life is that you've got to find a good balance between objectivity and subjectivity, between being emotional and showing empathy and being grounded in truth and reality. You've got to find a good middle ground. And Chuck is all objectivity. He knows the way that it's supposed to be done. He's very smart. 
he's grounded in truth and reality, but he lacks any bit of emotion. He lacks any bit of humanity. While Jimmy is filled with heart, he's always trying to do the right thing, but he's also not doing them the way they should be. And you've got these two extremes. Jimmy has what Chuck lacks, and Chuck has what Jimmy lacks. And together, they could be a good pair, but Chuck's ego just won't allow it. And that makes their relationship all the more complex. Like if Chuck just put down his ego and tried to help Jimmy succeed in life, Jimmy would get there, and I think he would become a better person. But he resents him because of how much people like him. And Kim is trying to do that, but it doesn't quite work as well. So I think the relationship between the two, two brothers is the heart and soul of this show, and it makes for some of the best storytelling here. You've got Rhea Seahorn, who once again is fantastic as Kim. She's such a well-written, likable character. She's cool, and I like the fact that when Jimmy crosses a line, she doesn't take that. She doesn't tolerate it. She puts him in his place, and I love that about her. You've got Jonathan Banks, who is once again fantastic as Mike. Mike is just one of my favorite characters. I just wish they gave him a bit more to do that connected into the main storyline. I'm sure we'll get there, but I can only talk the way I view it. Then you've also got Patrick Fabian, who no one talks about in this show, but I think he does a fantastic job. Like, in the first season, I thought he was a complete douche, but when you understand why he is the way that he is towards Jimmy, you understand and like him a lot better. And I think he plays this character so well, and I love the way he presents himself and talks. He has a very unique personality that stands out. You also got Mike Mando, who plays Nacho, and I think he does a really great job. You got Ed Bigley Gino, who plays Cliff. I think he's really good. Omar Mascatillo plays Omar, and I like him. Kaylee Cundin's really good. And then you've also got Mark Proxia, who plays Daniel, the drug dealer with the bright yellow everything. And I think this guy plays this character so perfectly. Like, it's a very underrated performance because he's so goofy and dumb, but he really does play it incredibly well. And I gotta talk about some more positives. Like, I know I kinda just skipped over it in my season one review, but this show is so incredibly well shot. Like, it looks absolutely incredible. I love the way this season begins with Jimmy locked in that one room and he can get out, but it alerts the cops. So you know he's in trouble there, so he doesn't do it. I love the fact that there's one, or oh, actually a few scenes where they talk about the hour drive from Albuquerque to Santa Fe. Because last season when they mentioned that, I actually looked it up and it was an hour drive. And I just like the fact they're keeping that accurate. I think the scene where Jimmy destroys the cup holder is really funny. And I love the music at the beginning of episode 8. Now, I do got some issues. Like I said, Mike's plot is so disconnected from everything else. And I do think the scene where Jimmy's trying to get fired is really funny, but it does go on a bit too long. And I wish we saw more of Jimmy's and Cliff's relationship after the commercial and before Jimmy got fired. It felt like there was lots of drama and tension there that they didn't amp up as much as they could have. Cliff just kind of vanishes for a few episodes. But look, this is a huge improvement. I thought this was a great season of television with great characters, great drama, great tension, great conflict. You're just yelling at the screen while Jimmy messes up time and time again, but the, it's a lot more complex than that. I can't wait to see where they take the cliffhanger at the end of this season into the next season. So, uh, yeah, I'm on board. I love this season. I'm going to go ahead and give Better Call Saul Season 2 an 8 out of 10. Okay, have you seen Better Call Saul Season 2? What did you think about it? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe. Stay tuned for some more videos soon, and Gavin out.